Today, we take it for granted. Earth orbits the Sun, and the Sun is just one of hundreds of billions of stars in a galaxy we call the Milky Way. What's more, there are at least two trillion galaxies out there in the universe. But there was a time when none of this was obvious, a time when our understanding of the cosmos was completely different. When we look up at the night sky, we see countless stars. People in ancient times saw the same night sky, filled with stars just like we do today. But they understood very little about what they were seeing. To them, the universe was a realm of the gods, something divine and mysterious. And it only made sense to believe that Earth was at the center of it all. This idea became known as the geocentric model of the universe. But ancient Greek astronomer Ptolemy took things a step further. He developed a detailed version of the geocentric model, now known as the Ptolemaic system. In his model, every planet and star revolved around the Earth, and he used complex math to make it all fit. For centuries, this explanation seemed to work. But as science advanced, this idea was soon challenged. Then came the 16th century, and a bold new idea from Polish astronomer Nicholas Copernicus. He proposed something shocking for the time. The Earth is not the center of the universe. The Sun is. And all the planets, including Earth, revolve around it. This became known as the heliocentric model. At the time, this idea was nothing short of revolutionary, almost heretical. It completely clashed with the worldview people had believed for centuries. To many, the thought that Earth wasn't the center of the universe felt not just wrong, but deeply offensive. But over time, Copernicus's idea gained followers. As telescopes improved, the heliocentric model became widely accepted as fact. It felt like the truth had finally been revealed. But science didn't stop there. Even the idea that the sun was the center turned out to be incomplete. Because the sun itself is just one star among hundreds of billions in the universe. In the 17th and 18th centuries, astronomers began using more advanced telescopes to study the Milky Way. They started asking a big question. What exactly is that hazy band stretching across the sky? At the time, most people thought the Milky Way was simply a collection of stars. But then came William Herschel, an English astronomer with a bold idea. He tried something no one had seriously attempted before. He began counting stars. One by one, he mapped the stars he could see through his telescope, recording their positions like he was drawing a map of the universe. Eventually, Herschel reached a striking conclusion. All the stars in the universe seem to be arranged symmetrically around our sun. In other words, he believed the sun was at the center of the galaxy. He drew a diagram, an oval-shaped map, with the sun placed right at the middle. At the time, it looked like a convincing model, but there was a big problem. Herschel's map was a distorted picture of the galaxy. Why? Because he could only observe a tiny part of it, just the portion of the Milky Way his telescope could actually see. To solve the mystery Herschel left behind, astronomers had to dig deeper. In the early 1900s, they began focusing on something called globular clusters, massive spherical groups of hundreds of thousands of stars, scattered throughout the galaxy. That's when a key figure entered the scene, Harlow Shapley. He believed these clusters weren't just beautiful to look at. They could actually help pinpoint the true center of the Milky Way. At this point, Shapley turned to a special kind of star called a Cepheid variable. These stars have a unique trait. Their brightness changes in a regular cycle. And here's the key. The length of that cycle is directly related to how bright the star actually is. So if you measure how long it takes a Cepheid to brighten and dim, you can figure out its true luminosity. Then, by comparing that to how bright the star appears from Earth, you can calculate how far away it is. 
In short, by measuring the brightness cycle of a C-feed variable, you can figure out how bright it really is. And then, by comparing that to how bright it looks from Earth, you can calculate its distance. In this way, C-feed variables became powerful cosmic yardsticks. Shapley began using them to measure the distances to globular clusters across the galaxy. Using the largest telescope of his time, Shapley studied more than 90 globular clusters spread across the Milky Way, and what he found was astonishing. These clusters weren't scattered randomly. They were orbiting around a common center. Even more surprising, that center wasn't where our solar system is. The sun, it turned out, was not at the heart of the galaxy. The sun was far from the center of the galaxy. It was out on the edge. At the time, this was a shocking discovery. The true center of the Milky Way wasn't where anyone had expected. It was hidden, obscured by thick clouds of interstellar dust that blocked our view. So why couldn't people see the center of the galaxy for so long? The answer is interstellar dust. The Milky Way isn't made up of just stars. It's also filled with vast clouds of gas and dust between them. And this dust doesn't just float harmlessly, it absorbs and scatters starlight. Between us and the galactic center lies a massive wall of dust and gas, blocking the light and hiding what's behind it. At the time, astronomers could only observe the universe in visible light, and that simply couldn't penetrate the dust. But Shapley found a way around the barrier. By studying the distribution of globular clusters, he figured out where the center had to be. If he couldn't see it directly, he would calculate it instead. A brilliant example of thinking outside the box. Shapley's discovery led to another big question. Just how big is our galaxy? By analyzing the spread of globular clusters, he argued that the Milky Way was much larger than anyone had thought. At the time, most scientists believed the galaxy was far smaller than we now know it to be. Later, new tools like radio waves and infrared light came into play, and they helped solve the mystery. The light we see with our eyes, called visible light, has a major drawback. It gets blocked by interstellar dust. Like fog, this dust absorbs and scatters light, making it impossible to see directly into the center of the galaxy. That's when scientists turned their attention to radio waves and infrared light. Unlike visible light, these longer wavelengths can pass through the dust, revealing what was once hidden. With radio and infrared observations, astronomers were finally able to see parts of the galaxy that had always been hidden from view. In the 1940s, radio astronomy sparked a revolution, completely changing the way we studied the universe. One of the most important discoveries came when scientists detected a powerful radio signal coming from the center of the Milky Way. This signal wasn't just starlight. It hinted at something far more extreme, a supermassive black hole at the center of our galaxy. Scientists named the source of the signal Sagittarius A. By studying it, they began to slowly uncover the long hidden secrets of the Milky Way's core. Radio waves revealed the activity at the galaxy's center, while infrared light uncovered its structure. After the 1960s, improvements in infrared technology allowed scientists to see through the interstellar dust. One by one, stars that had been hidden behind the cosmic haze came into view. Infrared observations were key in confirming that the center of the Milky Way is densely packed with stars. By combining radio and infrared observations, astronomers finally found strong evidence of a black hole at the center of our galaxy. Infrared telescopes revealed something astonishing. Stars near Sagittarius A were orbiting at incredible speeds. So fast, it defied imagination. For stars to move that fast, there had to be an immense gravitational force pulling on them. So what were they orbiting around? The answer, a supermassive black hole with a mass millions of times greater than our sun. Today, we know it as Sagittarius A star. Radio telescopes also help scientists map the structure of the entire galaxy. In particular, radio waves are excellent for detecting hydrogen gas. 
and by tracking how that gas moves, astronomers were able to trace the exact shape of the Milky Way's spiral arms. Through this work, they discovered that our solar system lies in a minor spiral arm called the Orion Arm, about 26,000 light years from the galactic center. Eventually, astronomers moved beyond ground-based telescopes, launching infrared telescopes into space to overcome the limits of Earth's atmosphere. One of the most powerful was the Spitzer Space Telescope. With it, scientists were able to see the structure of the galactic center and spiral arms in stunning detail. Thanks to Spitzer, we now have a much clearer full-scale map of the Milky Way. Some people at the time may have felt disappointed to learn that we aren't at the center of the galaxy. But as scientists studied the galactic core more closely, they discovered it's actually a hostile, chaotic place for life. With a supermassive black hole at its heart, the center of the Milky Way is bombarded by intense radiation and rocked by frequent supernova explosions. In many ways, it's a cosmic disaster zone. By contrast, the outskirts of the galaxy, where our solar system resides, are much quieter and more stable. When you think about it, the environment we live in isn't something to take for granted. It may just be the perfect haven in a vast and turbulent universe. And realizing that might be reason enough to live each day with gratitude and wonder.